Bom dia, buenos dias, good morning. It's my pleasure to open this new module of the School of Advanced Studies in Water and Society Under Change, being granted by the CAPES, the Brazilian Coordination of Higher Education. And we are very proud of, of receiving outstanding scholars in this new module. Uh, also with the support of the staff of the CETISC at the, of the University of Sao Paulo at San Carlos campus. My name is Eduardo Mario Mendiondo. I'm the coordinator of the School of Advanced Studies. And I'm I would like to open this uh, uh, module, inviting our standing uh, uh, professors. First of all, uh, Professor Patricia Gover, Arizona State University, Thank you for coming, Patricia, and stay with us. Please, you are in the, in the middle, in the center. Also, I would like to open this invitation to Professor Howard Witter, uh, Professor, uh, Emeritus Professor of Imperial College in the United Kingdom, and also Professor of the University of Saskatchewan uh, in Canada. Thank you for coming, Howard. Okay. Also, uh, our representative of the University of Sao Paulo, Professor Edson Venland, the director of the San Carlos School of Engineering. Also, representing the inclusion and diversity of the school of the University of Sao Paulo, I would like to thank Professor Luciana Schenk also coming here and uh, open this ceremony. Thank you, Luciana. <laughs> and very special thanks to the academics, uh, especially to students. Without them, we can uh, achieve nothing through this uh, advanced school. So uh, our representative of the students, I would like to invite Felipe uh, Arguello de Sousa. Please, Felipe, thank you for coming and also supporting this school. <laughs> and myself here. So uh, I would like to open this uh, module, uh, giving the opportunity of our uh, outstanding scholars and representatives to open this ceremony. Professor, first of all, Professor Edson Venland. Thank you for coming. <laughs> So uh, thank you, Professor Mendiondo, for inviting us for this opening session. And good morning, everybody, especially to our students and our visiting guests, professors. Um, it's a great, great pleasure to take part in this opening ceremony of the School of Advanced Studies of Water and Societies Under Change. And it's a great pleasure to receive visit by Professor Patricia Gober from the Arizona State University and Professor Howard Weider, now at the University of Saskatchewan. Welcome to São Carlos, welcome to the Engineering School of São Carlos. Um, well, that's, uh, I just want to talk a little bit to our students and, oh, especially our guest professor Ademir Barbasa from the, from the Federal University of São Carlos, and of course, Professor, professor Luciana. So, um, <clears throat> I'm in charge of talking about the, the, our new acquisition, that is the uh, UNESCO chair. And Professor Mario Mendiondo asked me to talk a little bit about this and what is this. UNESCO chair that we are starting probably in the next year. And it's a joint, a joint uh, proposal by the Engineering School of São Carlos from the University of São Paulo and the International Institute for Ecology. And probably you know, all you know Professor Tungizi. And we have been working um, a time together in order to propose the installation of a UNESCO chair in São Carlos at the University of São Paulo. And we really succeed. 
we already got the confirmation of that and we are just waiting to, to sign the, the final agreement between UNESCO and the University of Sao Paulo. Uh, the idea of this uh, UNESCO chair, it's not really a financial support for the develop development of our activities, but it's mainly uh, a UNESCO chair is a project and a team at a university uh, that partners with UNESCO in order to advance knowledge and practice in an area that is a priority for both the institution and UNESCO. That means we have the same goals, the same objectives joining with UNESCO. And in fact, that is a recognition of the work that has been being developed at the University of Sao Paulo that our engineering school at our department of hydraulics and sanitary engineering. And that is the next step of our international activity. So the UNESCO program serves for, is actually an integrated system for research, training, information and documentation activities. And that is exactly what we have been doing in working with water all this time. So I actually forgot the name of our UNESCO chair. Do you remem remember that, Mario? Yes. The official name? Yes. <clears throat> The UNESCO uh, Chair of uh, Urban Water Management be using recycle. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's what uh, <laughs> Professor Menjono said is the UNESCO Chair for what urban water management, uh, management reuse. reuse and recycling. Is this? Yes. Yeah, perfect. And that's what we are going to do the next four years and improving our skills in urban water and even inviting more students and more professors to uh, work together with us in this new challenge. So it's very important to have your cooperation here, trying to tell our students how to do a better work and to manage better our, our water resources. Um, what else what do I have to say? So, and then what is also important, in among all the objectives of the, this UNESCO chair, I would just uh, tell about one. And the idea is to create centers of excellence and innovation at the regional or sub-regional level. And so, really to improve the uh, skills of our students. And Another important point is uh, actually the international internationalization of our courses and our of our research. And <clears throat> this UNESCO recognition will support our department, our engineering school, to intensify these international links and provide an international level of excellence to our, our courses. So that's the, actually the, the main idea of our UNESCO chair. And we are really excited of this new, new challenge. And probably Professor Mario Mengiondo will be of our executive uh, manager in order to develop more intensely this uh, UNESCO chair. We have some ideas and first of all, we have to sign the final agreement with UNESCO and we are already planning a joint meeting with people from the uh, ANA, is the National Agency for Water, and we are trying to invite them and to the University of Sao Paulo and sign all this agreement together. And the activities that we are planning for this UNESCO chair are actually the development of innovative and interdisciplinary programs in non-traditional areas at undergraduate and postgraduate levels. <clears throat> and so this meeting now and this week is part of this. Lecture of topics relevant to the field covered by our UNESCO chair, and that's especially water. And then we are going to organize during these four years some workshops, seminars, 
meetings, conference, and so on. So we are really excited about the new activities that we are going to develop in, as part of our UNESCO chair. So I think that uh, these are the, the main ideas. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoyed this, the classes during this week. Thank you all you for coming, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, Professor Edson Venland. <clears throat> uh, I would like also to invite Professor uh, Luciana Schenk, also from the, this uh, University of Sao Paulo, to give some words about this moment, special moment about uh, well. uh, this school. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thanks a lot to be here. And uh, I teach uh, landscape design at the IAU, Institute of Architecture and Urbanism, that in Brazil is the same course. We are not separate. And landscape design are together as well in this course. I came here because I, I looked that word and uh, catalyzed my attention, change. And uh, I am very, um, sorry, since uh, 2015, Professor Tundizi, that you have heard, uh, asked for us to uh, develop a planning, a, a, study, a study about the open spaces in Sao Carlos. And we are doing this work since then. Uh, we are trying to do a connection between systems, water systems and open spaces systems. Because water just will be uh, safe and good to the urban experience if they are clean. And the people should see this water not just as a destruction. That is the way that we are see, seeing here in Sao Carlos, for instance. We have to change the culture. And for this, we have to project places that are good to go, good to uh, make our um, uh, walk up, walks walks and see the sunrise and things like that. Sometimes the people, uh, every year we show this um, research at Sesky, that is a place here in Sao Carlos. And some people um, tell us that we are romantic professors. And I think we are not romantic. We are contemporary professors. And I am glad to be here and with this companion. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Professor Luciana Schenk. Uh, also, I would like to, to ask our student representative about the experience uh, making companion in all of this year, mm -hmm. and also the success of this school is especially thanks for the students who supports uh, voluntarily uh, these, these steps. Uh, so, uh, Felipe, tell us about that. Thank you. Well, good morning. Uh, I'm Felipe. I'm a PhD student here at the University of Sao Paulo. I'm really glad that we have the visit of professors uh, Patricia Gober and Howard Wither. Um, that's unfortunately this is the last module of the, the last module this year of the School of Advanced Studies. Uh, and I remember one year ago when I was in Santa Fe when I met Patricia and I talked to her. She inspired me a lot with her presentation on uh, water supply in Tucson and Phoenix. And I talked to her and I asked, why, why don't you come to, to Brazil? And she said, yes, we can go. If you have a project or something like that, I said, OK. And when I got back to Brazil, Professor Mario said, Felipe, we have an open call from uh, CAPES to invite visiting professors to come next year. And this can fund uh, almost 12 professors to come. And we need help to, to write this proposal, and it's going to be very good for our school, for our students, and so on. And I said, OK, I know some people that we can invite. And I also remember when I was in Toronto last year for the Water Security Conference, uh, and I attended the Professor Howard Wither presentation. It was really nice, and I said, yes, we have two names for this school. And unfortunately, we, do, we could not have the presence of Professor Shiminkai. He was also at the same conference in, in Toronto le last year. And Professor Martin Crow. But I believe all the students here can get some 
very good um, benefits from these lectures. And I think this can also inspire your research and your career. And thank you a lot for coming. And that's it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Felipe. Thank you. <clears throat> also, in the last uh, American Geophysical Union fall meeting, we discussed together because we, we, you were in the you were in the in the top list of our outstanding in, invited professors. So for us, it's a it's a pleasure, uh, and I would like to to invite Patricia and after you uh, Howard to give some open words before all the course our, your expectations, uh, your vision about the future uh, between Brazil and South America in, in, in this uh, common future. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation, and I'm so very pleased to be here with you today. Uh, let, let me identify myself uh, first as a uh, social scientist. So I have uh, invested some considerable time um, over the last 20 years uh, collaborating with hydrologists and climatologists on the issue of um, adaptation in the Phoenix metropolitan area. My home, with about five million people in the Sonoran Desert, faces water challenges in, in the face of, uh, of climate change. And I think at Arizona State, like most other places, we were all doing our own work in our own little boxes. Uh, and what we're talking about, I think what we've, what, what I knew in my head, um, and now I, knew in my, I know in my heart, is that we were dealing with a complex system. And we all had contributions to make. M my, m my contribution w was uh, providing some of that n intellectual infrastructure and the knitting together a person. Because I'm a, a geographer by, by training, I can see the, uh, the geomorphology and the climatology and the biogeography along with the policy and the behaviors and the land use planning with, with some of the other issues. So we, we, we spent um, tw 20 years uh, pulling together uh, the, the science and the social science to see what tools we could create for uh, dis decision making. And I, and I think one of the things that we've, uh, every, every place is different, um, and so there's no reason to expect that the, the, the results of our model will have any relevance to um, your situation here. There, there is, I suspect, there are some common themes associated with how did we get to creating the model? How do we share the model results with decision makers to inspire them to change the um, policy signals associated with, with the community? And I, I think what I would hope I, I could contribute today is to share a little bit, very modestly, about w what we learned in 20 years of, of fusing science and social science and developing um, decision-making products for the water management community and, and hope that some of those um, hard lessons that we've learned um, would be of some use and, and to, to you here and that maybe uh, we don't have to make all the same we don't have to make all the same mistakes again um, because some some of the mistakes uh, were, were were pretty obvious and pretty and pretty generalizable. So I look forward to being here. Um, um, I uh, uh, I love dealing with um, complex interdisciplinary groups um, and and see what we can find in common about how we approach um, adaptation to climate change at the city level, because it is at the city level where this is happening. Um, all over the world, this is an urban phenomenon. So I think we need to share this experience with as many cities as we can. 
and this is my partner, Howard Weeder. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for the kind invitation to be here. It's a great pleasure to be back. I was last in Sao Paulo about 30 years ago, giving a short course and uh, learning all about the Tiente River and Blings Reservoir and all those challenges that Sao Paulo has. Um, a little personal, I'm an engineer. Um, I spent uh, the first 30 years of my um, teaching career at Imperial College in London. And um, uh, Canada then um, was looking for people to come in and help them develop some programs. So I was appointed in 2010 to um, what was called a Canada Excellence Research Chair at the University of Saskatchewan. And um, I moved to Canada and Pat came with me. And um, they, we, we had quite substantial funding uh, about $30 million, um, uh, so we created an institute, the Global Institute for Water Security, and built um, a strong interdisciplinary program with a, a big emphasis on doing high quality science, but also integrating science uh, with social science, um, and also with the arts uh, as a way of communicating uh, the challenges to, to people. Um, so. Um, while I'm here, I'm going to um, tell you a little bit about um, the challenges, and the, the needs to bring people together across disciplines and what we were able to achieve in Canada. And then I'm also going to, in my subsequent lectures, go back to uh, some work I did in, in London. Um, and I'm going to talk about uh, some of the challenges of managing groundwater dominated river systems. Um, particularly um, the challenges faced by the, the south of England, which has very little rainfall and a lot of people. Um, and I'm, I've also done a lot of work with UNESCO over many decades. Um, and one of the things I did was to found um, a global initiative to work on arid regions. And so I'm going to give a talk based on some of my experiences of really the driest parts of the world. And um, I should say that um, um, I've had quite a varied career and um, I also do a certain amount of international work on, on disputes. And uh, just right at the moment, I'm very busy working for Chile in a case against Bolivia. So um, I've been spending quite a lot of time in other parts of South America and uh, very much enjoying the experience of working with South American colleagues in uh, pushing some research and hopefully some uh, dispute resolution forwards. And it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you for all the professors and students also. Only to make a remark, uh, <clears throat> Professor Shimin Kai and Professor Martin Kroll, they postponed their visit to March next year. So the good news is the, advanced, the School of Advanced Studies going to, is going beyond this year. Huh? So it's, this is not the last module that is uh, <laughs> the good news. Part one. Uh, part one. <laughs> it is the reloaded, uh, the part two. Uh, this is the, the, the first announcement. The second is that we have followers in the internet. So because we are in streaming just now, we have several people following us and also uh, participating through the, this, this week with, with questions, with suggestions, uh, and even brainstorming uh, uh, new uh, uh, ideas and projects. So, this, so we are in a, in a middle atmosphere presenting and also in a virtual uh, uh, moment. Uh, third is about the vision of UNESCO Chair. Uh, we in San Carlos has uh, a vision of San Carlos 2000. 119, that is 100 years uh, uh, in, uh, uh, onwards. So this is the idea that Professor Tundisi uh, shared with us, that's uh, putting all participatory ideas uh, going 100 years be, uh, in, in front. So that means we need to speak each other to create dialogues, inclusion, di diversity, and also uh, through the Sustainable Development Goals to try some steps 
to achieve some goals. That's a very complex uh, task, but we are just starting uh, this vision. So in this idea, I would like to return to Professor Edson Venlan to uh, explain more about uh, the special moment we have in Brazil, in South America, about sanitation. We are in a special moment this year and the next year that brings uh, a lot of opportunity uh, and ideas and alliance and networks around this UNESCO chair. Thank you. Thank you again, Professor Mario. I'm back to the, to the word. And I will just make some comments about the special mon moment. And the idea is actually that we have a new proposal, a new law at our parliament concerning the uh, sanitary system in Brazil. Um, our inf infrastructure in this water supply and sewage system is very deficitary. We have around 35 million people that don't have access to the dis di water distribution network and around 100 million people that don't have access to the sewage system, to the sewage treatment plants. So it's a big concern, environmental concern, and also a health concern in Brazil. And actually, it involves a lot of people. And the reason for that is that usually the sanitary system in Brazil is provided by the state only. And at the moment, this Brazilian state doesn't have enough means for investment in distribution networks and sewage system uh, installation. And the proposal being discussed at the parliament at the moment, at the, the private sector, will take part uh, to solve this problem. So we are expecting to have a big investment in the next years in water distribution networks and sewage treatment plants. So it's a very big, should be, a very big development of our sanitary engineering activities. So it's a big challenge to our students that have to be uh, enough educated and prepared to solve the main problems of our society. It involves a lot of social questions and that's a, actually a, a special moment for us because we are now starting our UNESCO chair that is related to urban water. And at the same moment, our parliament is discussing this problem of water supply and sewage treatment. So uh, Mario says we are like a kind of visionaire proposing this UNESCO chair at this moment and we are really willing to be an, a center of excellence in order to support this development, this the new era that's going to, <clears throat> to start in our country once we have this law approved at the parliament. And so we are really expecting a lot of investment and we, we will really need a lot of people, a lot of engineers and people from the social science working together in order to solve a big problem of our country. So um, we hope that this work together with the private sector will allow us to, to solve part of our social problem of the deficit that we have in our country. So we are really expecting a lot of new activities and really inviting a lot of people from abroad in order to reach this international level of excellence. So and you are going to take part of this. We are counting on you. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So only to take an idea, the bill, the prospected bill about new projects, is about, roughly speaking, in between 50 to 60 billion US dollar. So in, until 2035. So for the next 15 years, is a plenty of opportunities to make projects, dialogues, and partnerships around the urban water management. Uh, and of course, <clears throat> the situation is to include more social aspects. So the new uh, water security index created in Brazil, just ran in for some discussion, is including the resilience aspects, the social aspect, 
the economic aspects, and of course the physical aspects. So four big dimensions putting together, and, and we can weigh them uh, because Brazil have different biomes, different realities, and differ, different opportunities. So this is a, a special moment to discuss and to, uh, to refine and update these indicators, these indices, uh, uh, to uh, perform a, a, a short-term and a long-term future for planning, especially urban planning, like uh, uh, Luciana uh, told us. So thank you uh, for the, the first uh, uh, explanation, the welcome words, professor, also from the director of the university. Uh, and I would like to uh, explain for these five days, uh, we reorder, we reschedule the, the agenda. Uh, today in the afternoon, we have a special session, call it the Ari Hextra Water Memorial. Should be, uh, this is the Monday, is in the first column there. So uh, at, at the end of the afternoon. So we gathered several video, movies, photos, pictures. Uh, that's uh, Arian Hextra shared it with us through his uh, visits in Brazil. Also, uh, and be uh, sharing with you because uh, Arian Hextra also shared with us this future vision about uh, urban water, footprints and so on, and governance, especially. Right? So uh, Tuesday and Wednesday, we have seminars, student seminars. They are very, very open. And this is, uh, <clears throat> we are starting these seminars in an open platform here uh, to be more proactive. Uh, uh, and until Friday, we have the closing ceremony with Professor uh, Jose Galicia Tundisi, also part of the, chair, the UNESCO chair and also uh, putting the uh, stakeholders participation and partnership. As people said before, uh, we need the public and private partnership to take this uh, vision into reality. So this is a big, big challenge, especially in Brazil, especially in South America. Usually we are used to have only or mainly public funds to take education or to take some in, uh, infrastructure or even projects. And putting the private uh, stakeholders is a big, big challenge for us. And we are very excited about that. So uh, um, now we are inviting all of you to come here and we are going to freeze this moment through a picture. So here in the front, with the, 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 the man of the picture is over there. And you all, of, all of you, are coming here and share with us your companion. Your companion. Huh? So, thank you for coming. Um, I hope all this week and in the in short term and long term future, we can we look forward to having a blue and a, and a, a, a fruitful partnership with all of you. Thank you for coming. Okay. Okay. Agora nos vamos formar aqui, ter um momento juntos, tiramos uma foto e aí depois fazemos uma iniciamos. After after the photo we have a a, a picture, a, a, um, a coffee break. Coffee break is okay. Yes. Okay. The coffee break is okay. This is ready.